Hello everyone. Uh, I want to talk to you guys about two things tonight. Datuk Sri Najib's first 100 days and the firefight in Selangor. Last week, Bukit Antarabangsa State Assemblyman YB Azmin Ali called for an exco reshuffle in Selangor and he immediately found uh, several enemies from the DAP. On Saturday, Wangsa Maju, Member of Parliament, YB Wee Chu Kiong came to his support. Now, Wee Chu Kiong is the sort of person one respects, even if begrudgingly, because he is a straight shooter and he's been in a lot of trouble in the past because of it. On Saturday, Wee Chu Kiong threw his weight behind Azmin Ali's call for an exco reshuffle in Selangor. This former DAP strongman, who is now a member of Parti Kadilan, said there is much merit in what Azmin says. Not least, because one state assemblyman, at least, is seen to be more than just friendly with, and I quote, underground business activities. What does that mean? Well, I'm not sure. Uh, we Chukyong didn't name any names, and neither did Azmin, so we're not going to name any names here either. But it is clear that both of them uh, are not referring to any exco members from PKR or PAS. Uh, this is what Wee Chukyong said in his blog. This is an open secret within the Selangor State Administrative Office. This is most unhealthy as it will give the impression that the EXCO member is in support of the underground business activities and the impropriety will eventually affect the image of the Pakatan government. Wichu Kiong then questioned YB Teresa Cox's motives for admonishing Azmin saying that it was rather strange that a so-called senior ex-co would try to stifle free speech, especially the state assembly. He says that Teresa's demand that Azmin be removed as the leader of the backbenchers club indicates, and I quote again, bad attitude and sheer arrogance. We concluded in this blog by saying, In view of what I have heard from most Pakatan members in the Selangor state, with regard to a certain party's overextending affability with the questionable business communities and what had been now highlighted by YB Azmin Ali in the day one, I am of the view that the Menteri Besar of Selangor, Yang Amat Berhormat Tan Sri Khalid Ibrahim, should seriously consider reshuffling the state exco in the interest of the image and well-being of Pakatan as a whole. Uh, I wonder what Wee Chu Kiong has to say about Theresa calling him a shit stirrer now. I mean, that is really something else. I mean, the Saputi MP uh, is known for, for not missing her words, but calling someone a shit stirrer, uh, a party colleague, well, not a, a coalition colleague, is just simply unheard of. I mean, Barisan National has had a lot of people stirring its shit, but it's never called anybody a shit stirrer. Well, I guess um, you can't really hide who you really are yeah well apart from the fire fight that is breaking out in Selangor the nation also marked the first 100 days of Prime Minister Datuk Sri Najib Tun Razak's term and it seems that the opposition is quite unhappy about the generally positive report that the mainstream media had given him but is there any reason why they should be upset uh, first of all 100 days is not a long time in office but it is enough time for our Prime Minister to make changes and set the tone of his administration. In general, Datuk Sri Najib's tone has been conciliatory. He listened to all the grouses of the Don Bumiputra and instituted some systemic change in the government, from the lifting of mandatory Bumiputra quota in certain key sectors of the service industry to promising merit-based scholarship and educational assistance going into the future. And of course, there's the one Malaysia concept and the goodies that he handed out on his 100th day, which included toll discounts, a new unit trust scheme, and 44,000 low-cost homes which will be sold to current tenants. I think the opposition are up in arms because they say most of these are populist moves or that they are shades of allegedly what Pakatan Rakyat had fought for. My question is simple. If the current government is now offering those very things that you say people want and that you are fighting for, why, or oh why, are you angry? Should you not rejoice in this shift in policy and offer yourselves as allies to a government that has the interests of its people at heart? Should you not want to help 
a government that listens to the people succeed? I say if Pakatan is honest in their fight, and if their fight is really for the people, then they would rejoice. But if their fight is purely to topple the Barisan National Government, regardless of whether it is good or bad, then of course they would be upset. I think we all know that uh, people like Lim Kit Siang has been in opposition for so long that they have no idea of what being in government is like. And if they did come into government, they wouldn't know what. They would still act like the opposition. If you don't believe me, just look at how his son, Lim Guan Eng, is behaving in Penang. On the problem of Kampung Buah Pala, he simply says that he cannot solve it because it is the fault of the previous administration. Well, I say, if you are in government, then it is your problem. If you don't want it to be your problem, then just hand over the government to Barisan National and they will deal with it as if it's their problem. Now, you don't hear Barack Obama saying he cannot solve a problem and starts pointing fingers at the Bush White House, do you? I think Pakatan Rakyat is angry that the government is listening to the people. When governments listen to the people, they make populist decisions. It's that simple. Even the most ardent Najib supporters knows that the Prime Minister has a lot of work ahead of him. And what he has done is a small portion of what he has to do. But at least he is working in the right direction. Recently, I heard an interesting story about Najib and his constituency of Pekan. In the mouth of the river in Pekan is a breakwater that was built during Tun Razak's time. And it was put up to prevent flooding in the area. But changes in geography and weather patterns and land usage and that sort of thing means that the breakwater is now the cause of floods. So Najib decided to tear it down. Some people see it as the son tearing down what the father has built. But I see it differently. You see, he was not tearing down what his father built because the breakwater is just a tool. What his father built with the breakwater is a happy and prosperous community. Now, the tool has become a hindrance, so it has to go, so that the community can continue to be happy and prosperous. Datuk Sri Najib is faced with a huge task and carries the burden of his father's reputation. He has big shoes to fill and a huge expectation of the people to meet. I think a lot of people realize this and they understand what the Prime Minister is trying to do, and this is why they gave him a good approval rating of 65%. After this, Datuk Sri Najib will have to work even harder to maintain that approval rating or make it go any higher. The best we can do is support him and give him the chance to improve the country. When the 13th general election is around the corner and we are still not happy with what the Prime Minister has done and here's the important thing, and we think that we can find someone better, yeah, someone better, then we can start campaigning against him. If not, then what's the point? Good night, Kuala Lumpur. We'll meet again tomorrow.